Welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League Podcast. I'm your host, Dave, and today we're back with another dream team. I've roped in me old mate, Aaron Whitaker, and today he's got the most crazy task. He's got to come up with a World All-Stars Rugby League dream team. Mate, how are you? And again, how tough was this challenge? Oh, I'm just going crazy, mate. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, just another crazy challenge, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down to down to do it, mate. That's for sure. Be interesting, but again, as I said, it's it's only um, players that uh, I've followed um, in my career, growing up and and, and playing. So um, yeah, I hope everybody has enjoyed them and and likes this one as well. Um, you get someone else on that. This could be totally different, but um, these people have um, certainly uh, made my hair stand. You know, on the back of my neck, stand up on certain moments and games and and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it'd be good. It'd be interesting. Awesome! I can't wait to see what you come up with. I bet I probably won't be able to pick any of them, but we'll find out. No, there's a couple of superstars that have played them around the world. So, you know, I'll have a couple of stabs at a couple of your positions because I kind of know you pretty well now. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how we go. All right. So the rules are: you can pick anyone from any nation. Club anything. This is your world all stars. Pick anybody you like that played grassroots to the a World Cup. Doesn't matter. So, mate, let's start with fullback. Who did you lock into your fullback? Yeah. <laughs> Again, it was just so hard. Um, you, you got, as I've said before, Daryl Williams, Richie Barnett, like Gary Belcher. Well, Brett Mullins, he would have been in the running for me. He was unreal. Brett Mullins. Um, Jonathan Davis. <laughs> yeah, Superstar. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Joe Lydon from um, Great Britain. Um, but, yeah, like, as I surprised you with my New Zealand 13, um, yeah, yeah, this guy, did, he's just, when you're out on the, it's, it's totally different, Keeler Fisher, and a lot of people won't know this and won't have experienced it. But just being on the field with this guy, he just made you so confident because he was confident as well. Um, yeah. And again, like this guy would be my goal kicker. Um, unfortunately, no, it's not Daryl Halligan or Hazem Al Um And I've got, I've, I had to go with Matthew Ridge, mate. He's former right. All Black. Um, yeah. Um, Played for Manly, played for the Warriors, but just, yeah, just an outstanding leader from the back. You just knew you were so safe. Like, if they got through, you know, the front line, you know, he would he would be there. So I know it's a bit of a surprise to some, um, you know, but, um, yeah, I, yeah, he's just a, stood out for me. Yeah. Gained 25 tests for, for the Kiwis. Um, yeah, and again, just tough, tough as, and yeah, just a professional, just just a professional, mate, um, and competitive. Oh, competitive plus. Ultra, ultra competitive. And he wanted to win <clears throat> and win at all causes, and, and that that's what I was about um, within the laws of the game, obviously. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I've gone. I know it's a bit of a... Uh, a bolter there, but yeah, now gone for Ridgey. I just yeah, goal kicker, you know, turns your four points into six pretty much ninety percent of the time, you know. So this yeah, really. goal kicker was outstanding, you know. So yeah, I've gone I've gone for Ridgey. A lot of people might thought, you know, he could have gone for someone else or an Aussie or you know, because he could have even gone back in the day like Reg Gaznia, you know, oh, wow. um you know, um, Clive Churchill, Daily Messenger, you know, guys like that. But yeah, <clears throat> one for none other than Ridgie as my goal Beautiful. kicker as well. All right. Yes, definitely a left field choice. I wouldn't have seen that one coming. So very good. Okay, let's go to the wingers. There's so many great wingers. Like, where do you start? Um, I'm going to make a prediction. One of them's going to be English. And he's coming up on my podcast next week. That's one oh. of my predictions. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. You've been reading my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, well, 
again, it was so tough. You've just got quality, um, you know, guys like Sean Hoppy, um, um, uh, you look at a Weedle Sailor, Lossy Takiri, Eric Gross yeah. Senior. Like, yeah. man, it's Don just. Um, he was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, again, I, I predict Martin O'Fire because he's outstanding as a player. Like, wow. Well, my num my right wing, I've gone for ET and Andrew Edenhausen. Oh wow, old ET. He's a gun. Mostly at centre, but he did play a lot of wing, didn't he? As well. Oh yeah, and just and just quick. I think in the Invincibles tour, I think it was in '89. I think he was on the he was chosen as a winger, and oh man, he was just speed to burn back then. Um, yeah. Obviously, he got with age, but yeah, for me, he was just outstanding as a winger. Um, yep. always finished off. Yes, he did. And um, yeah, number five, I did go for Martin O'Fire. Um, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Well, like for some fourteen tries in a game, like that's that's crazy. And um, from my experience, when I, I debuted against them in the third test against Great Britain, like he had made a break, and I, I literally went to dive to tackle him around the legs, and it was just like he put the afterburners on and just oh, and he is. He is just so quick, but um, yeah, um, just I've got speed to burn on my wings. You know, I could have gone like they're, they're not overall big players like a Manu Vatavai or um, like an Eric Grove Senior or anyone like that. I just I've gone for speed because my centres will, will put them in the gap and they just need to finish off with their speed. And I don't think anyone would be able to touch these two. To be to be fair. No, mate, you know, Andrew Edinghausen twice in his career scored five tries in a game for Cronulla. Like, how many <laughs> players could say they did that in a in a professional, you know, rugby league side? That's pretty cool. Exactly. And I've sort of gone for them over the likes of Dane O'Hara and Dean Bell. Um, like, sort of, Dino and, and, and Dane probably didn't have that, that top-end speed. Correct. Like, ET and no fire. Like, they were quick. Don't get me wrong, they were quick, but... Mate, apart from Lee Oden Ryan, who got the start on Martin O'Fire. Um, yeah. Mind you, you probably could chuck John Greengrass there on the wing. No, nah, just kidding. Um, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, so that, yeah, that's my, yeah, I've just gone for out and out speed. Um, Love it. And work rate. Like, ET was pretty good coming out of the red zone. He was always there. Yeah. Um, same with Martin O'Fire when he had to, but so that, yeah, they're my wingers. Cool, man. Cool. All right, let's move on to the centres. Now, if you don't pick Mal Meninga for one of these, I don't think you're truly a rugby league fan. So I'm penciling in that one, and I've got no idea who you're going to pick for the other one. So have I right? Have you gone with Big Mal? Oh, I'll let you sweat a bit. But, like, you could, you could have gone, like, guys like Mick Cronin. Um, Hello. Steve Ella. He was a beast. Steve Ella. You know who I who I followed as a kid because I loved Parramatta back in the in the early eighties. Um, you know, even even I Chuck Nigel Wagner in there, um, Clinton Torby, yeah. like on their day, like three tries for Clinton against Aussies. Same with um, Sonic. Um, but yeah, I've gone. I've just gone for for sheer size. Okay. Um, and a little bit of speed, and that yeah, you're right. I've gone for Melman and go yeah. This <laughs> got away. <laughs> the size of the guy. And I remember um on my de debut for a little while, <laughs> and we were Canberra Raiders, and he was on the other side was Melman and I was like, oh my god. God, mate, I'm just shitting myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so packing it. <laughs> yeah, gone for Big Mel and um, Kevin Iro. Again. Oh, wow. Well, Kevin. Oh, what a great choice. It's sizes. You've definitely got that in the spades there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I just, yeah. Yeah, I just think they um they complement each other out in the centres. Um, oh, there's just so many names. You, you know, yeah, it, was, it was a tough one, but um, yeah. I've gone for those two. I think you know, they're both six plus, six foot plus. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, they're just, just I think they're the opposition. 
<laughs> awesome, man. Loving it. Absolutely nice to see another Kiwi in there. Right, moving on to the halves. Mate, this is this is probably as tough as it gets, trying to pick two halves out of all the amazing superstars. Yeah. Like you could go Andrew Johns, you could go Stacey Jones, you go Peter Sterling, Brett Kenny, Cliffy Lyons. Uh, you know, like we haven't even started on the you know the English players yet. <laughs> like, wow. Gregory and um uh Bobby Goulding, uh yes, Shawnee, um Gary Schofield, like they were they were outstanding as well. You even missed out like Steve Mortimer. Um I've even got that I've even got down Cooper Cronk. Greg Alexander would be another on my shortlist. Legend. And, uh, yeah. uh, but for me I've gone I've, I've gone with a little bit of size and just smarts and they don't call him the king for nothing. Um and that's none other than Wally Lewis, but I've partnered him with Olsen Philippina in the in the halves. Mate, that is a dynamic, uh, very strong and sizable, scary, but also very skilled uh, set of halves. I can see why you went that way. As I say, like I had Gary in the halves in the in the New Zealand thirteen. Yeah, as I say, you could have chucked in Stacey, could have chucked in um, SJ, um, the Wiz. Um, but yeah, no, I've, yeah, just those two there for me growing up. Um, uh, for someone to be labelled the king, there's got to be a reason for that. And um, yeah. and someone like Olsen Filipina, who made the king look pretty ordinary, that's got to be a pretty good nation, don't you think? Yeah, man. I like the irony in that, how you put them together. <laughs> you know? That's brilliant. <laughs> that's what I mean. I've gone for Olsen at six and Wally at for seven, but normally Wally's at six. So that's what I'm saying. It, to me, it's just a number um, yeah. on the back. So... Yeah, that's why I yeah, went for, for Olsen and Wally in the halves. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, mate, moving on to the front row. This could go anywhere. <laughs> okay, <laughs> who have you got in the front row, man? Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've gone with a little bit of, probably a little bit one-sided here, but um, being a Kiwi and all, but I've pretty much gone for the same pairing as what I had for the New Zealand 13 and and, and, okay. Kevin and Ruben Wiki. Well, to be fair, you know, you can put them up with any prop that's ever played the game and they're as good as any of them. Like, that's so, like, unbelievably gifted and strong yeah. and had the mana and the leaders and they show, you know, their example on the field. Follow me, boys. I'll show you the way. Like, you just, they're outstanding. Absolutely, absolutely. And you could have gone for, like, Spud Carroll, Paul Harrigan. Oh, I love uh, Paul Harrigan. He was unreal. He was so good. Greg Dowling and that, but, like, I think Kevin sort of won that contest anyway. But, um, you know, we're not having Greg Dowling in there. <laughs> just, yeah, the guys up front. Um, but Glenn yeah, Lazarus, so, wasn't he an amazing prop as well? Like, you could have chucked him in easy. You know? Call him Rock with Eyes or something. So, yeah, the brick with eyes. That's the one. The brick with eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so they they will lay the platform and ruffle up, ruffle the others up. So yeah, I've gone for yeah, yeah KT and uh, Rubes. Beautiful, mate. Okay, so who's number nine? Well, this has to be an interesting choice. There's just you know you could have gone Jeff Tuvey. There's uh oh dude, there's just such a list. I I truly believe that this guy is the goat. To play 400 NRL games, um, you know, the body of an accountant, but he's got the smarts of an accountant. Oh, I've gone for none other than Cameron Smith. Beautiful. What a great choice. Who else was ever going to make 400 NRL games? And, and he still could have kept going, really. He didn't really lose anything. But I was surprised he retired. I thought he had more in him. And uh, the Queensland legend, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. No, just, yeah. Um, legend of the game, you know, like, yeah, just crazy to think that someone could play 400 NRL games, you know, yeah. and there's, there's a lot of class hookers, you know, like Benny Elias, and obviously I named Isaac Luke before, and yes, uh, Henry and Robbie Paul, and you can chuck them in there, but, um, yeah, no, I Steve just, Walters. I couldn't go, yeah, yeah, Steve Walton, go past. Oh, yeah. 
Cameron, and he's he's tied up at our club at Crumman as well. Uh, coached our 15s this year in between nice. his commentary uh, jobs and that. But um, yeah, <clears throat> lovely family, and um, yeah, I when his book came out, I uh, I drove an hour um, to go and get his book signed. I I that's I loved him. I love him so much. I probably stood in the queue for about an hour. <laughs> I bought two two books because I promised my little mate um, Conrad Diggs because Conrad Diggs loves um, Cameron Smith and I I stayed in the queue for an hour just shook his hand and because he's a good mate of Matty Guys who coaches our A grade side at Crumbin and yep. yeah waited an hour just for him to sign the sign the book for me and a book for uh, Conrad so. How good, how good. Uh, he's a legend, love him. Awesome, man, what a great choice. It's pretty much, he is the GOAT. Um, for when it comes to dummy halves, there's, there's no one better, really. Okay, back row, how do you choose a world back rower, mate? What goes through your mind when you got to somehow narrow it down to two guys? <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, like, jeez, the, the Aussies had plenty, um, Pommies had plenty, you know, and Dennis Spets and co. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I, again, a little bit one-eyed here, but you can't not pick Mark Graham. And I've gone I've gone for his second row partner. Like, I, I picked him at 13 in my New Zealand 13, but I've picked Hugh McGahn as my other second row. So I've gone for Hugh McGahn and Mark Graham in my second row. Beautiful. Two... Absolute legends, totally deserving of this, but they don't really need much introduction or reasoning. We just know they're just superior. Yeah. They're wonderful players. And I said a little bit one eyed, like with the Kiwi contingent in this in this particular World Thirteen, but hey, it's my list, and um... that's right. <laughs> it's your team. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man, who did you put in at number thirteen? Did you choose someone other than a Kiwi this time? I have, I have. Um, someone I loved watching as a kid, played for Parramatta. You probably know who he is. Um, <laughs> but it was just a perpetual motion. Um, oh, I know who he is now. <laughs> epitomised. Yeah, just epitomised the game and every time you watched him and they went into the changing rooms, he was always there, just spent, uh, just... 100% left everything out on the field, and that's all you ask of. And I, I just love this guy. And I had the privilege to um, meet him at a luncheon, um, sat with him and his wife. Um, and, yeah, just love this guy to bits. Loved Parramatta. Um, and that's none other than Ray Price. Hey, Ray Price is unbelievable. I'll never forget his last game for Parramatta, 1986 grand final. They won 4-2, I believe. Uh, unbelievable grand yeah. final, man. Just crazy. But he just, he was just a unit. Covered in blood, mud, and everything. Just an absolute champion yeah. and gave 100%. Like, I know there's a, there's some amazing 13s out there, like Toots and obviously Bradley Clyde and and those guys, um, Ellery Henley from, from the UK and... And even back in the day, like Reg Gasney, I think we mentioned earlier on, Ronnie Coo, guys like that. But um, yeah, um, yeah, loved Ray Price as a kid, and yeah, just loved what he was about, and gave, and he just gave a hundred percent. And I like to think that for me as a player, um, I like to think that I gave a hundred percent as well, and left everything out on the field. And obviously, I got it from that fella there. You know, yeah. he was fit. You know, I could have put Wayne Pierce in there. I loved Wayne Pierce oh, as well. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's tough leaving him out. But um, yeah, I, I, it was either between him and um, I could probably pencil them if I wanted to because it's my list. So, <laughs> but yeah, Ray Ray Price for me at um, at Parramatta, who I loved and followed as a kid. Right, like Wayne love Pierce was at at the top. Yeah, so yeah, gone for what Ray Price over. Over um over Wayne Pierce. So yeah. Big call. Love it. Okay, man. Let's move on to the bench. 
this is where it gets interesting. We're going to have a few utilities, I imagine, and a couple of big boppers. So who was like your utility sort of guy who would come in as your number 14? Yeah, and again, this was this was tough because, um, again, like picking Wally and Olsen in the halves, you know, like you mentioned before, I could have put Peter Sterling in there. Um, yep. Terry Lamb was another one that I, as a kid oh, growing up. The Lamb, he's so um, good. Yeah. Um, but I went for um, Peter Sterling's teammate, um, loved him to bits. Again, met him at a at another luncheon, another Figs luncheon, and that's none other than Brett Kenny. Bert. Oh, mate. He scored two tries in three grand finals in a row. Yep. That's yep. unbelievable. Who does that? That's crazy. He's such a good player. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I just loved um, Brett Kenny watching him as a kid. Um, that Parramatta side in the early 80s was was amazing. Yeah. To watch, watch them play. You know, love Steve Eller as well. Mickey Cronin. Yeah. You know. That whole back line is crazy. Good. David Lydiard, unbelievable David guy as well. Just such a champion. Yeah. Yep. Cool thing about Rick Kenny, you can throw him in the centres as well as a bit of cover. You know, you can cover the back line. He's great. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if Kevin, Kevin or Mel got injured, um, then I could chuck him in there as well. Oh, so, yeah, good cover. Could chuck yeah, him man. on the wing. Need to. <laughs> absolutely. Speed to bird. Okay, man. Who's your sort of uh, number 15 moving into the forward cover? Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, love this guy. Uh, played for Newcastle. Uh, yeah, just tough as teak. I think is. I think. Um, I don't know which one was taking it up. You'll be able to let me know. But I've, I've gone for Paul Harrigan. I remember oh, the Bud, Bud Carroll and the Paul Harrigan collision, Manly versus Newcastle. That ninety-seven okay. grand final. I think it might have been. I'm not sure. I think it... So, yeah, again, just tough as teak. And I think, you know, once Kevin Tummity had sort of finished with them, then Paul Harrigan could come on and do some more damage. <laughs> oh, mate, I love watching him play. Like, I'm not a, I've never been like, no, I've never supported Newcastle as a club, for example. But, mate, Paul Harrigan, and I'm a Queensland fan if I watch Origin. But there's, there's no one scarier than Paul Harrigan. True figure yeah. ball for. He was so passionate about Newcastle and New South Wales. Watching him win that '97 Grand Final, like you see the passion in his face and how much it yeah. meant to him yeah. to win their first final was actually Absolutely. just like it, you know, it just puts the hairs on the back of my neck when I watch those highlights. He, he's yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And you could have chucked like Paul Siren in there, block a roach. Um, you know, he's a little bit of a hothead, but. Um, yeah, yeah, we love him. Just like Paul Harrigan, and sort of back in that day, you know, when I loved Parramatta and watching Parramatta, Newcastle, and uh, the doggies play against each other. So, yeah, yeah great, great times. Yeah, man. Okay, so who else you got on your bench? You got a couple more spots. Who you got? I have um, my other back um, substitute. Um, just love this guy and and what he's all about. Again, you know, as you say, I could have gone for Joey Johns, um, Darren Lockyer and that, but oh, this guy's just an outstanding human being, and that's JT, Jonathan Thurston. Oh, mate, I'll never forget the 2015 grand final, that that field goal. But the, the conversion that hit the post on, after the siren and then to have yeah. to go into the extra time and kick a field goal, that's... Uh, but then the origin memories as well. He, he won so many games for Queensland and... What an outstanding player who was told he was too small to play. Yeah. And then he went on to become one of the greatest players in history. Like, oh, Absolutely. What a player. What a pick. I love it. I love that you got JT in there. I think someone said the same about Logan Edwards too. Um, they said that he was too small. Probably some like a coach from Auckland maybe, I think. <laughs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> and obviously Logan proved them wrong, just like JT proved yep. Artie wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, nah. and the yeah. thing is too, I've got Ridgie as goal kicker. He could be a backup goal kicker. Um yeah. and then I've got Dominga as, you know, the old toe poker as well in there to to <laughs> kick a few over as well. And Cam Smith. So 
Yeah, he'd be my first choice, probably. He just never missed. <laughs> and, also, and also, Olsen Filipina. Oh, my God. You've got about eight goal kickers in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Is there anyone else on your bench? Is there anyone you've missed? Um, I mentioned this guy before. Again, just far out tough as. I think he won a few premierships with the Broncos and then Canberra and then the Storm. So I could have given that away to you, but I actually uh, know who this is. <laughs> oh yeah. Just an outstanding um player, huge, big body. Um, and that's Glenn Lazarus, and I've sort of penciled him with um none other than Petro Sina Nice. Uh, nice. Love Petro. Um yeah, just a workhorse. So yeah, I just thought with Glenn Lazarus and Petro That's after KT KT and um Rubes had done the damage, chucked them on with Paul Harrigan. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ridiculous. You know Glenn Lazarus, like you you nailed it. He's won he's the first player and I think still only the only player to win three grand finals with three different clubs. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's still a record. Yeah, amazing. But he'd done that by 1999. That was when they won that Storm Grand Final. So that record, I'm pretty sure, still stands. Anyone can yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Nah, just, yeah, so I had to, I had to put Glenn in there and, um, yeah, and his mate, uh, Petro. So, you know, because you could have gone Webke, you could have gone you know, Chuck, Kevin Campion in Steve there. Steve Price, but... he would have been in the running for me. I love watching Steve Price. Price, but, yeah. As I say, I can't pick them all, but yeah, and as I said, you could have probably chucked um Kurt Dane Sorensen in there as well. But yeah, went for yeah. Glenn Lazar, Petro. And then last uh 18th man, I've I've had to put another pommy in there um with a with a slice of um Aussie. Uh I've gone for Ellery Hanley and Brad Clyde as oh, um, mate. Like, two champions. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Ellery like, Hanley, he came over and played Balmain in 88 in that grand final. He got kind of taken out in that final and sort of stopped Balmain's run to the premiership. Unbelievable. Yeah. He was an unbelievable player. And, uh, you know, he actually coached our, our mate Corey Laurie over at Doncaster and uh, gave him his world, his Hall of Fame medal. Unbelievable. Oh. It's pretty cool, eh? Awesome, yeah. I didn't realize. I know he went coaching, but I didn't realize he'd gone to to Doncaster. So, yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Good. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, wow, what a team. Yeah, that's pretty much my um, world international thirteen. A um, lot of players that I've missed out, but um, yeah, bit of fun. It was yeah. interesting. Yeah, just obviously, as you can see, the splattering of Kiwis, Parramatta. Yeah. Um, few, yeah. And a few um, token poms in there. So, but, um, and again, um, I've gone um, co coach and Frank Endicott and Wayne Bennett, of all people. I like that. That's a very good combo. Love it. Well, I just with uh, the 88 World Cup with um, Steve Kearney and, and, and Wayne Bennett there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, he's a you know you could have probably chucked in Craig Bellamy, um, Ivan Cleary as well as, as yeah. coach. But yeah, gone for Happy Frank. Um, yeah. he seems things work no matter what team he has. Um, and I've always um, loved Wayne Bennett as a coach and a and a mentor. So he kind of looks after you know not just the player but the person. Um, yeah. And I think Frank, Frank sort of has that same attribute as well. So gone for Frank and, and Wayne Bennett and, as the coaches. And then I'm going for, again, Gordy Gibbons as manager, along with um, JD, John Devonshire. Uh, John okay. Devonshire was my manager um, for the 93 tour. Um, yes. I, think he's look, I think he looks after the New Zealand Maldives as well. Yeah, love okay. JD. Um he, yeah, he was a laugh, laugh a minute. He was brilliant, uh, Johnny, and so was Gordy Gibbons. So, and then um, I've gone for myself again to look after the boys as 
league safe slash strapper. And and I've gone for um Sir Peter Charles Leach as my tour party executive. <laughs> oh, perfect. Got to have the old butch in there. Oh, good. <laughs> good way to finish. Probably would have had him in the New Zealand 13 as, as yeah, as just, he's just a beautiful human being, him and Janice, and um, what he's done for the game of rugby league. Um, I can't thank him enough. And yeah, whenever I get to go up to the old boys' reunions, always. When it was the Sir Peter Leach Lounge after, I think they changed it to the Stacey Jones Lounge. So it was, it's always good to catch up with the Mad Butcher. Yeah. Um, great sponsor back in the day. Um, you know, with the Mad Butcher um, franchises and that. And just done a lot for the game of rugby league along with um, Gordy Gibbons and JD and obviously Frank and, and Ray. So... But I'd just like to take this opportunity, if I could, Dave. Um, as a kid growing up, there's a lot of a lot of people um, that did a lot for me as a as a you know down at the Addington Showgrounds and as a ball boy. And um, I just like to say a massive big thank you to Merv James, rest in peace, and um, Jimmy O'Neill, the Lightfoot family. They were always there, sort of helping me out um, down at the Addington Showgrounds. So. And obviously all the players, you know, I don't think I would have played for New Zealand or Canary if I didn't watch those players. So, And a big thank you to you, mate, for allowing me to pick these teams. It's a bit of fun and um, a little bit of controversy, but, um, hey, that's, yeah, these are my teams and a lot of these players mean a lot to me watching and, and, and playing alongside, so... Yeah, it's been it's been brilliant. It's it's actually been it's been great, mate. It's absolutely my pleasure. Uh, you know, I I'm, I love the friendship we've built over the last year since we met. When you came on my podcast, I was an absolute unknown uh, person in Canterbury. No one knew who the hell I was. And then one year later, I can't even I can't even go to Hanmer Springs without getting spotted. Now <laughs> I got spotted by Vinnie Anderson over there and a whole bunch of league boys that were there as well. So that was brilliant. Pretty cool. brilliant. Yeah, good. <laughs> but anyway, man, uh, thanks so much for giving up your time, coming on the podcast, doing all the research, putting your team together. Um, it's been an absolute hoot and a half for me. So uh, thank you again, man. You're an absolute champion. Thanks again, Dave. Thanks for having me, bud. Cool, man. Right, that's us. We're out of here. I've been your host, Dave, as always. This has been the incredible wits, Aaron Whitaker, Kiwi648. We've done another dream team, and we're out of here. We'll see you next time for kickoff. Full time.